This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 1890. We love you, Darren. We're here to we're here to talk about Darren. Darren Noel, for those people who don't know, in the CGS community, uh, passed away suddenly, um, and we we knew we were going to record, and then we were like, okay, let's talk about Darren. Yeah, yeah, we're, it's like we're getting to that point in our lives where no, like definitely getting to that point it sucks you know like yeah. oh yeah it really Jamie, sucks Jamie there's Jim Dietz now there's Darren yeah and I you know I knew Darren like pretty well um and we were at a lot of cons together over the years we text regularly like all the time um and, you know, he hosted Tasha and I to stay at his house when we, like, our first Dragon Con. Oh, I and didn't the second, know that. Or I forgot that. That's cool. Yeah. And then a, a, another Dragon Con, we stayed with him, like, the night before the con started because we only had our hotel room for, like, the con. And then we crashed at his place for the night before because there's yeah. no point in paying for a hotel when there's nothing going on at the hotel, you know. Yeah. And he was just so hospitable and so friendly and so real like that guy had no he was himself all the time yep and he wanted you to be yourself and he like just put himself out there and like made you be you and like take the barriers down you know um i remember meeting him like the first time you know because we knew him from the forums for you know, a yeah. long time. And then yep, you yep. meet him and he's like in your face. And it was like, Whoa, <laughs> this is a lot of Darren. I don't know if I can handle this. Right. But then you get to know him and then you're like, my God, this guy's amazing. Right. Yeah. Cause he was just so sincere all the time. And he was always a lot of fun, genuine, happy. I, I don't think I ever saw him when I, when I would talk to him unhappy. I mean, maybe he was, I mean, everybody has their ups and down days. I, I know that, but he was always fun when he was around others around us it was a lot of fun to to see and talk to darren he was all about letting you know who he was by being as extroverted or whatever the right right word is right like you're gonna know and he's if if you're uncomfortable around what he says and who he is oh well you know that's he was like that on the forum he was like that on uh, voice messages that we used to get, you know, from CGS. He was out, you know, listening to Legion of Substitute Podcasters, which he was a part of from the beginning with Paul French. Like, just yeah. you had to take his humor, his personality, his thoughts about not even just comics, but just about what he thought of the world. And he just laid it out in front of you. And it was up to you to decide how you were going to react to that, which really winded up being more a reflection of who you are than what he is, which was so great about what yeah. he has to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I touched on that in my, I wrote a little thing on Facebook, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I said very truthfully, right. Like before I met Darren, I thought I was like, super super you know woke super you know not homophobic or whatever and then when darren's like being darren right next to you i i I was admittedly uncomfortable the first time i met him maybe the first two or three times i met him right because it's it was a lot but then i got over it like you said peter like it was about me it wasn't about him Right? Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I do have like maybe a few hangups still lingering out there. And he helped me erode those, you know. And now, now I I feel like today I'm probably as good. Like I'm 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 very good. Like I can't say I'm 100 percent. Right. But I'm at like 99 something. Right. Like I'm really good. And that's because of Darren. Right. Yeah. Um, And it's awesome. And I feel like that was a 
tremendous gift that he gave me that he wasn't even trying to give me. He was just being real to himself. And as a result, I became a better person. And that's just so <laughs> remarkable, right? Well, and that, that's the thought that went through my head. I, I'm, I'm better for knowing him even though I had not talked to him probably in a couple of years, especially since the the pandemic and all that, I, th that's something I do. Yeah. You know, everybody has regrets when you think about something. I regret not just chatting with him, texting or whatever over the last few years. Um, but I always felt better because of knowing him. There's just no other way to say it. I, I'm, I'm better because I knew Darren. It was really incredible to see on his Facebook page, the people come out and post things you know we know him from comics and podcasting and you know certainly brian you got to know the whole dragon con part of darren you know and then there's people who came in because of his love of disney and then there were people who came in which i didn't realize or maybe i didn't just forgot but that he does have some theater experience in his oh i don't know if i life. knew that wow um and People saying things like, when I moved to Atlanta, you opened your home to me, you know, you, I had conversations with Darren about whatever, you know, and, and, um, and that's something that, I mean, I, I, we know that, right? We know that all these people that we met, the ones that really made the community, sometimes I think some, you know, I, I, I think this, I think we, we know this, and I think it's sort of an understanding too those people like Darren made the community what it was sometimes more than, than we did. Right. Because <laughs> sure. whether we didn't post as much or we were do, busy doing the podcast as opposed to being on the forums or whatever, you know, they were the ones who really yeah. shaped it. And you had people that stood out and who we still think about or talk about to, or talk with to this day. Um, Darren is one of those people. I, I'm trying to find, and I have to. I have to really dig through like the ten thousand pictures I have downloaded onto our shared drive or something. There, I swear, there's a picture of me and him when we realized it was one of the early CGS shows when we were like having a con. I can't remember if it was like episode one hundred, two hundred, whatever. There's a, a picture I swear of him and I in our short sleeve button down, silkish or whatever material Justice League shirts. Because we found out we had the same one. I'm like, oh my God, I got that at home. So I I, I just, I can't find it. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Of course, there's the classic picture from episode 300 of Darren kissing Peter on the cheek. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or you kissing I'm Darren kissing on, the on the cheek. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Well, as he's so dressed great. up as Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, I sent the ones in the, you know, Shane and Darren in your old, you know, in your, your old basement. basement. Yeah. Oh God, it's yeah. so washed out. You can't see it. You know, him dressed, him cosplaying, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Look how thin I am. Uh, and I guess Heroes Con, I don't, I think it's 2007. Those of Probably. us who went. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's him as Rainbow. Like it was a whole bunch of us, James, yeah. there. And we went down, and that's him at the end there. Like, um, and pants with a little more hair up top. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, I went to dig up the old CGS MySpace page. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> on, on the Wayback Machine. Oh, no, 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 no. No, the, no, you can still log on to MySpace. About a year ago, a year or two ago, I logged on and there were still pictures that you could that you could see. And I always in back of my mind I was like, I gotta pull these pictures. I gotta pull these pictures. And then I went just recently because of this, you know, because of what happened with Darren and and I can't get anything. I can still log on. But I can't find any pictures because I wanted to see if there were any of him on there as well. <laughs> um, yeah. We, so Heroes Con, I think, probably was the first time we met him in person. I would think. Maybe. Probably. I don't remember. Yeah. Like you said, I don't remember if he came up for 200 or 300. I know he came up for the Super Shows. I think the, the first time I met him was was when that picture in, in Brian's basement. Okay. That night before the con. I'm pr pretty sure that's the first time I met him. Yeah. Or somewhere, yeah. somewhere around that weekend. We, I, Tasha and I definitely met him before. Uh, obviously, that Heroes Con and a Dragon Con because we remember him talking about how he had ordered his Wonder Woman costume, but he didn't have it that first Dragon Con that we went to. Um, so, 
that was like the second Dragon Con, I guess, that we yeah. attended. Yeah. And he was part his uh, for those people who don't remember, his forum name was Rainbow Cloak. I mean, right there putting out who he was. Um he I don't know if he started, but he was part of one of the CGS sub forums that Super Friends of Dorothy. You know, oh, that's he, right. Yeah. There was like CGS UK, CGS yeah. Australia. I think there was CGS West Coast, maybe Canada. Yep. Yeah. And then there was a group called the Super Friends of Dorothy. And uh, uh, it was always fun to like post or, or like go in and read what they were talking about whatever day and then just make a comment and then get out, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> those were, you know, that that was their community or their, their thread. Our first uh, Dragon Con, he he took us to the uh so the uh, dragon con right there's lots of parties at night and stuff yeah. all these different ones and uh, so he took us to the rainbow flag party which was just an epic you know dance party with like awesome you know, boom, 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 you know dance music <laughs> and lights flashing and glitter everywhere and it was phenomenal we had so much fun katasha and i love to go dancing like club dancing and that was just like epic and just <laughs> he was having so much fun and i mean we got separated because he went off and you know had to do his darren thing with some of the boys right and and uh you know he's dancing with other people but we still had just such a blast and we wouldn't have known about that party or gone to it if it wasn't for darren right so mm. that's yeah. cool i had him on um my podcast for episode 600 he was on talking about the gods and monster stuff and and he was such a dc guy right like he was so yeah. into the dc stuff and he was and he really gave some great conversations and and or discussion points and and that was early february i mean that was and i think it although i didn't know it at the time it was just a couple of days before his birthday which was also in like early february i believe but then i realized he also was you know i do a legion podcast legion of superheroes which obviously he's been doing the legion of substitute podcasters they're up to 750 i think is their episode number now wow um and on that one it was a zoom call he he logs on and right the first thing out of his mouth was uh, i should really i should have pulled it i can pull it for this episode to play but he was like peter you look more and more like liza every day like <laughs> i was like <laughs> It's the first thing out of his mouth. Not hello or anything like that. You know, it's just go right, right in, making me laugh. So that was funny. He would always, every time I saw him or talked to him, he'd be like, you know, Carly never leaves you. Yeah. <laughs> and he had the hats, oh. hats for Matt, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he made Matt so uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, he he would taunt me endlessly, and even in front of Tasha, you know, yeah. just saying all his you know, crude things, which was so such a part of his charm, right? Like, again, he didn't hold, he didn't pull any punches, like, ever. And all when he was having fun, he didn't pull any punches either. So he yeah. went right down the well, you know, that was one of the things I loved about him. He was just yeah. so much fun to talk to about, about, about anything that, that would come up. Um, but I, I, I loved that he was so passionate about the comics. I mean, that's what, brought us all together to begin with was was the show the forums and everyone's love of comics um it, it was just great to, to hang out and have conversations i feel like he showed us some crazy shit in his uh, when we were staying at his place too like when we were <laughs> not at the con you know we we're just like watching tv or whatever and he was always putting these random videos from YouTube that he found that were funny or <laughs> naughty or whatever, you know, like just, yeah, that was, <laughs> I can't, I wish I could remember what he showed us. Cause there was some, as I recall, it was some weird shit, you know, but like weird in a funny way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I had, yeah. The, there was one very funny story. So when we were staying at his place and like one morning he prepared breakfast which was, you know, super nice. Like he didn't have to cook breakfast for us or whatever, but he was making like eggs and everything, but then he, he was making toast and he doesn't have a toaster. So he was using his entire oven, which I guess is like a very, <laughs> like, I think it's fairly common in the South. Like he made it sound like it was, I don't want to speak for the South. Right. But you know, he was a Southern guy and he was telling us. So he fired up the whole oven just to make like, four pieces of toast, you know, which is like so excessive, but whatever. And then he put them out and he put this incredibly fat 
like pat of butter on each piece and like just like right in the middle. And you know how like if the toast, you don't do it right away, it doesn't really melt because like yeah. the butter was in the fridge and now the toast isn't hot anymore. So then we had like dry toast with like a like a tea <laughs> tablespoon of butter on the middle. You know? And we were like, what do we do? Like, we'll just eat it, I guess, because we're trying to be polite. But it was like, my God, you know what they say about Southern cooking being unhealthy? Well, maybe this is an example. <laughs> it was really funny. And we talk about that all the time because it was such a strong, I mean, I'm not exaggerating. It was a giant, like, like three quarter inch <laughs> thick pat of butter, you know, on each piece. <laughs> my God, damn. <laughs> How many people's homes have we been in randomly or just you probably more than anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Because we stayed at Norton's, Mike Norton's place in Chicago. Oh, that's right. For, uh, I stayed at Darren's. We stayed at what's his face is in the UK. God, I, 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 I'm terrible. Adam would remember his name. I can't. Eamon? Eamon Clark? No, 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 no. One of the other listeners, he and his sister had a house and they let us stay there the first um mm. london con like the first like night before the con again we got there but john didn't have a hotel room for us till the next night um oh, what's his name oh my god and then i feel there must be somebody else oh i stayed at no, i didn't stay there i've been in david peterson's house we didn't sleep there we just like played games and hung out Technically, oh. I was in Katie Cook's house for like five minutes. We met there and then went to dinner with David and then went to his house. I think Pants and I were at Freddie Williams's house when we did oh, the Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's I don't cool. think we stayed there. I don't remember, but that was when he had, I think he has since moved, but he had like he a did. gigantic, yeah. yeah. his workspace and his creative space was. Like oh my God. The pictures that he thing. posts are yeah. awesome. Well, it was a, it was a, it was an indoor pool and then they had it covered oh, up or filled in and that was his whole, so it was as big <laughs> okay. as an entire pool. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. I know. Well, of course, Freddie was at our, our house hmm? when he yeah. came on. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Oh, I was at no, I slept at uh, Cat and Josh's house. Okay, San Diego the one time. I think maybe it was like the day after the con or something. I don't remember, but yeah, I stayed there. Well, Darren stayed with us at Pants and I at uh, Heroes Con the one year because it was just mm. the two of us. Not Heroes Con, um, um, the Orlando Con. Okay, the, what was that one in Orlando? Mega Con. Mega Con. Yeah. So it was just. It was just Pants and I, and then Darren needed a place, and we're like, dude, it's the hotel's paid for. Just come crash with us. And then Darren took Pants and I to dinner twice to Disney restaurants. Oh, wow. Like those fancy like hotel ones. Yeah. Like, it was amazing. Now, it was, the experience was lost on Pants. He, that's how, when we discovered Pants hadn't ever had, had never had soup. Okay. Because we went okay. to this one place, and it was, uh, <laughs> it was like an African-themed restaurant. It was an all-you-can-eat thing and they had crab bisque and you know, i know pants like seafood i'm like oh pants, sure. you got to get the crab bisque it's delicious and he's like i i don't that's when we found out and it was darren and i were in shock that's i don't i'm not i don't mean to rag on pants i know he'll listen and he'll hate me but it was it was a funny story related to darren, to darren yeah too. it was a yeah. moment that we shared together so yeah. i blame that story i think i stayed at charlito's apartment in new york maybe for a mocha I know I was there for some reason. I don't remember why, but I remember staying at one of his uh, one of his apartments. And then I was trying to think. Do you remember? I don't know if it was uh, episode two hundred, three hundred, one of the super shows when we got that phone call, that phone message about the pert, the pert shampoo in the in the hotel I remember that no, i don't know I don't if it was like that. kyle minor i thought darren was in on it about like when they when they came into the hotel room the shampoo was pert all you know like three in one pert you could wash your body your, yeah. your condition and That's shampoo funny. your hair <laughs> and they left off this whole conversation i don't remember if he was part of it or not <laughs> i tried to look it up i couldn't find it. it's probably on one of the you know we used to do just a voicemail episode we weren't even on it it was just all the voicemails because you know yeah. we were recuperating so it's on one of those i'm pretty sure about <laughs> what is with this part 
<laughs> I do. I know Kyle Miner. That's like a theme that he, you know, rails against all in one shampoos and you know, what a disservice many men are doing to their bodies. Right. <laughs> and so <laughs> it might be that. It might be that. <laughs> Funny. Uh, I know Adam said he he's can't he couldn't be here tonight because he's rehearsing a show that he's doing, and he obviously would have um had things to say too. Yeah. I if anybody wants to send a a message, an audio message, uh, talking about Darren, especially those people who really you know knew him down in this, in in Atlanta or people who met him through the forums and. You know, I can play it on future episodes or, you know, we can have them and just to share. It might just be nice to hear. Um, oh, yeah. The, from the larger community that met him through the, because there, uh, I've talked to people that, you know, like Sean Pryor texted me and Daryl Taylor, you know, and they were just like, geez, you know, like everybody was in shock. And then seeing yeah. certain names come up. Mm -hmm. Like on the Facebook page, like Adam Tibble and Kyle Miner posted and a bunch of other people. And it was like, wow. and everyone's posting all kinds of neat pictures that they had over the years. Yeah. 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 53. He was 53. Oh, I didn't think he was older than me. I know, Brian, what you said about we're at that age. It's like, I don't want to be at that age. No, like, I don't I know. You know, you don't, you know. And also just the fact that, uh, what a what a moment in time that i think it's interesting like social media has brought so many people together and yet also made it so easy to stay apart because we feel like we're together yeah. right like i have friends like that i have so many high school friends who have facebooked me over the years who after i left high school it's not like i didn't care about them but i was i was on to the next thing right like i i went to like my fifth year reunion and have never gone back you know not for any reason i just you know, i was like okay um and yet i know what they're up to even though we don't have conversations you know i can look at their facebook or whatever and it's so weird right because it's like oh yeah we're connected someone like an old high school friend i think passed away well one one passed away from a car accident but um somebody else passed away and it was like, geez, you know, like, okay. You know, you, you have this sort of false sense of, oh, we're still connected. And, oh, it's kind of, it, it's sad that you, that they're gone. It's odd that they're still in your life. So you know, when they're gone. Right. And you know, you don't have to read it on a newspaper or sometimes you don't even know for, for years, but yet it's, it's this false connection. Right. And it's like, uh, it's, it's like Darren was a little different because I had just talked to him a couple of weeks before that, but it's like, you think they're there and they make comments and people comment on pictures or Twitter or where out Instagram or whatever. And you're like, um, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just a weird brain thing that I keep thinking about. Like people are in our lives yet. They're not really. And then when they're gone, it's like, ah, I should have called them or I should have talked sure. to them or, but, but we're connected. So it's like, you don't feel like that absence is there. And yet it yeah. is still a, it's a, it's a valley. Yeah. And then it's abundantly there when they are gone. Yeah. Well, it's a thing like, it's like, you know, Darren lived 12 hours away in Atlanta. Right. So I right. wasn't, we weren't going to be hanging out all the time. We would see each other at Dragon Con every couple of years. And in the meantime, we would text, you know, and it's like if he lived in Philly, we'd be in the same D and D group and we'd be having fabulous yeah. <laughs> parties all the time. Right. But because we were 12 hours away, I was like, well, we, we can text and then I'll see you at dragon con. Like, cool. You know, and right. it, that felt like it's not enough, but it, it's something yeah. right? because distance, like, what can you do? You just like, I don't have unlimited travel time and vacation. Right. right? So like I have to, you know, yeah, but, um, it does like, I, it, it is super weird because he was again in that virtual way he was a very real presence in my life and i would text him little things that were happening in my personal life or he would text me something some naughty thing that he would found online and, you know try to get a reaction from me whatever <laughs> right. that was pretty common um 
And so it was, and now it's just like, that's never going to happen again. And that's really yeah. weird. And it's really hard. This one hit me in a, in a, in like a different way, even, well, you know, Jamie, we had years to prepare ourselves. So while I still miss him every day, it wasn't like a sudden, like, oh my God. Right. With Darren, it was just like, well, I, no, that can't be like yesterday. He posted <laughs> on Facebook yesterday. Yeah. And now today, like, what, how does that, that's not, that, that can't be real. Right. Right. And so this one is taking a little, it's like hitting me harder because yeah, I don't, it's just. Well, just when, like, when pants first sent the text and we got it, the first thing I thought was, well, I know that name, but that can't be him. It's got to be an actor. Do I know an actor by that name? And I'm mm-hmm. starting to search. I'm like, no, it's got to be him. And then I go to Facebook. I'm like, oh my God, it was him. So like, like it was, it was like disbelief at first for that, for that reason. Like it, it just can't be. Yeah. And, and like Jamie, I mean, uh, there are hours and hours of recordings from his participation on the Legion of Substitute Podcasters of, of episodes I have yet to hear. Yeah. And and that's, I think that's amazing on one level, right? Like just, okay, I can just go back to episode one if I wanted to and just hear that development of how they created the show and his humor is on just full display in every episode on that on that podcast. And their recent episode, which was, I'm, I'm fairly certain it was 750, Paul French um, opened it up with a just a loving tribute to his podcast brother, his, you know, they met on the CGS forums and um, it was really great to hear that. And uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, on that level, it's, it's really kind of cool because his voice will still be around. Um, for anybody who wants to hear yeah, or, or if, if they like fell out of touch and they, you know, like, you know, it's, it's limited in the conversation, but yet it's not because I know many times they go off on many tangents, especially because of Darren. Um, so you really do get a sense of who these people are, um, through podcasting. And that's something that people have said to us many times and something that I've realized over many, many years, they, the people who listen and, they know us more than we realize, right? You get to know. Yeah. It's like yeah. when we used to listen to Stern, you know, I, you, yeah. kn- you knew their lives in and out because they're just talking. So they don't even remember what they said half the time. And um, actually, I got a funny email about that for you, Brian. Um, uh, so, and he was real. And so you can go and listen to those episodes. You can get an idea of who he was. Right. Yeah. So I absolutely. Think that, that is kind of great. You know? Well, I, I still do that with Jamie. I'll go back and yeah. listen to old episodes, favorites that I know that I love listening to. I was like doing the math. I was like, when we started the podcast, I had known Jamie for 16 years. And now I knew Darren for 18 years. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's like, Obviously, I knew Jamie better because we spent so much time together at jobs and hanging out and everything. Like the sure. amount of hours I spent with him far exceeded the amount of time I I spent with Darren. But like in terms of like how long these people have been part of our lives, even if they're it's in small ways, it's like that's a long time. Yeah, you know. And I always think of Jamie as my oldest friend, like my my like best like friend for like a long time. And it's like actually I like. I didn't know him that long, like that many years total, right? I met him in 1989. You know, mm-hmm. like I went to school with kids longer than that. You know, sure. like, it's just like, it's such a weird time is weird. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yeah. where I'm going with that, but it was uh, just no. like, shit. Yeah, we are. We're going on 18 years, May, March 7th. Yeah. 2023. That's, 18. That's weird unto itself. Yeah. And I mean, it's easy for us to sit here at our age and look back 20 years and cause we were adults then. I mean, even, even being that young, we were still adults, but to look at my kids, especially like say Ben, who's 21 to go back 20 years. Well, he was just born like, so that, that there's a lot of change and a lot of growth in there. And I always, I always kind of revel or wonder when I'm gone, will they go back and listen to, when they used to show up every now and then on the show or the way I would talk about them as young kids, 
on the show, stuff like that. Like it's, it's out there yeah. for them to hear and for them to show their grandkids. If some, you know, just, it's just a weird thing that I think is great if they would do it and just listen every now and then. I think of that episode where I told them if I swore, I would give them money. So I just, I think <laughs> I just still, gave them like $20 or still something. Still talk just about that. Money. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> they still talk about that now and then it comes up. That's weird when you said adults, we were adult. Like when we started the show, I was 32. Yeah. And when we met, that was another, what, five, six years before that? It was, it was 90, 98. Eight, 98, yeah. 98 ish. No, 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 no. Cause you guys were at my original apartment, I think, once. And that would have been 97. Oh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was 97 when we met. Yeah. Somewhere in that range. Cause when I did, when, Kevin, I had already known Kevin for sure because we did uh, that musical together. Speaking of musicals, when we started this uh, recording, uh, we did Hair Together in the Park and he was in yep. it. And that was early 98, I think. I, I, I couldn't make it, but I remember you doing it. What was that, 99? Now that I don't even remember anymore. I don't remember. But yeah, I guess it was around that time. Yeah. Because I started going to um, Golden mm -hmm. Eagle at, at Berkshire. Yeah. In the in the Walmart shopping center area. And that's where I met Alex, John, you, Kevin. Yeah, because when you said adults, I was like, I wasn't an adult. I yeah. was a kid, wasn't I? <laughs> like that's how I think of myself. Like, yeah. were we kids? Yeah, we were like you twenty-five. <sighs> you and I would have been twenty-five. And when we started the podcast, we were just kids, weren't we? Weren't we just kids running around? No, you can say sure that. We behaved but... <laughs> like children. I was already <laughs> married with two kids by that time. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> So wait, if you guys, you guys met, that's interesting, Shane, that you started work because, because Alex moved in with me, I think in 98. And I met you through Alex, sort of. I mean, we didn't talk much. I was over at your place for something to hang out Were with Alex. Really? Before? Once. You know what? <laughs> I don't think I was there. He, he yeah, had probably a, he not. had a gathering. Yes. Yeah, so this is the story, right? I wanted a roommate. I was single, <laughs> and I had this room in my house, and I was like, "Dad, let's fix up the basement, then I could get my, somebody to move in." And and like, "Oh, it'd be great, you know, and do that single guy thing, have friends over and stuff." The entire time I was there, the entire time that he lived with me, which was like two years, he never had friends over except for one time when I was like away for the weekend. Yep. And that's when like John and you and some other people came over. I'm like, yep. this is why I got a roommate. Never once did he rent a movie. Like I thought I'd come home from work one day and there'd be like a DVD or like, oh, Al oh, Alex, you rented the movie. Let's watch the movie. Oh, cool. Nope. Not one time. <laughs> never. And didn't then he have, got a girlfriend for a while and then they never came out of the basement. Yeah. Didn't you have like a, a patio or a small little tiny patio? We did. Or, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, so maybe I was there too. Probably. Yeah, you you probably I'm pretty were. sure it was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Alex, John, you, Peter, me, probably Jamie, Scott, um, yeah, Kevin, that's possibly. Hysterical. Unbelievable. It it would have been it would have been maybe even Mike. It was the original kind of old school crew, because that was the time when because right right so ninety seven I was still in kind of the apartment. Carlina and I lived in a little apartment in Birdsboro. And then when we moved, it was up to the house where we were hanging out in the basement every week and everybody be there till two, three in the morning. The, 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 the girlfriends and, and Carlene, cause Carlene and I were the only ones married, but whatever girlfriends came always like at midnight would, would kind of die off and fall asleep. And we're still there doing <laughs> trivia and movies and whatever till two, three in the morning, waking everybody up at three o'clock to, to go home when people were starting to go. And some people crashed, it didn't matter, but that was like every week or every other week for a couple of years. And then we go to your house, Peter, or that one time at with Alex. I mean, they, we'd go to John's place. Yeah, it, it was just continuous every week. It was get together and and do trivia and watch movies, yeah. cartoons, whatever. Yeah, like you said, Brian, that like we met during Crusaders. I'm sure we were at Golden Eagle together at some point. Like we had I to mean, have been maybe, but like I, I see, not I, that we not that we might have like it might have been passing conversations, but nothing. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't really remember. I mean, I knew the name. I definitely knew your name, Peter, before Crusaders. Mm. But like, yeah, I don't really remember. Yeah, because at that time, you know, I wasn't working at the comic store anymore. So I was just going in and I would go in a lot of times on Sundays because we would do okay. uh, gaming in the back on Sundays. 
And so then I wouldn't come in on Wednesday to pick up my comics because I'm like, I'll just come in on Sunday when I'm there, you know? Yeah. And so, so, and so like I gamed with Scott Lesher and Jamie and Alex and, 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 uh, uh, Dana and Nate. I don't oh, know. Oh, right. Nate, Nate was, Nate, you know, remember sure. I said Dave Harold, who I worked with? Well, Nate is his younger brother and he would game with us and everything. So, yeah. I was like with that crew, you know? Yeah. yeah and I, I didn't get over to fairgrounds as much. I was always at Berkshire once in a while. I'd go over to fairgrounds, but my subscription was a Berkshire and I would go there every Wednesday. My work schedule was at that time was such that I could leave work on one half day during the week. And I picked Wednesdays and they kind of looked at me like, why do you want Wednesday? I'm like, it's comic book day. So I'd leave at like noon, 1230. I'd get up there at one o'clock and we'd be there till four, five, six o'clock sometimes just talking. Well, I also know I went to the Penn Avenue store. That I was never a couple in. Times. I drove by it. I remember drive, driving past it a few times in my life because I lived, I lived Boyertown and Pottstown. So I was up for other things in Reading and I know I drove past it, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. go into the Penn Avenue store. That's where right. I worked the most. Yeah. I mean, I did plenty of shifts at fairgrounds too, but uh, Lem had me predominantly at the Penn Avenue store. Yeah, I was talking to that. Uh, 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 so, do you remember Justin Credible? Remember that from name yeah. from the foot? Yeah. So he has he has a podcast, Justin Vactor, and we were talking and um, uh, and this kind of you know ties into Darren too. Like I feel like Darren's one of those people who obviously had multiple circles in his life, like many of us do, mm-hmm. you know, um, and uh most people when i when i hear them talking about how they grew up reading comics i don't know how it was for darren but you know maybe they have a sibling that they that they share their hobby with maybe one other friend and um people used to always say that oh you know your your podcast sounds like you guys all are just standing in a comic store reading comic or talking about comics. It's like, well, yeah, but that's, that's what we did. Like, I feel like we were super fortunate that Mm -hmm. we had, you know, like I grew up with comic with, well, I grew up with friends who read comics, right? Like my junior high, my high school friends, Matt Chrisman, Jeremy Reed, like people who also went to golden Eagle on fifth street. But I feel like you guys were my comic book friends, right? Like that's a difference, right? Because I knew them from from school, even some of them even from like elementary school when we used to go to like a program together. Um, and then just one of the things we shared was comics, but we also used to play sports together. We go to the movies together. We go to dances together. Like we started because of the comic book thing. And yeah. so so many people don't have that. Like comics are such an insular thing. Um. And well, was... I had no, I had no comic friends until I met Jamie. Yeah, I was the only. I mean, my friend who introduced me to comics, you know, because he his parents owned the Seven Eleven, and that's mm-hmm. how I got access to comics. And but then we didn't really talk about comics much; like it wasn't really a thing. And then he went to a different school. Then, like a year later, so then I didn't like see him anymore. Um, and so I just met Jamie, and then that was the first other human being that I knew <laughs> who read comic books. I had no friends growing up through elementary, junior high, high school. Nobody read comics mm. at all. Um, people were interested. I had friends that when they'd come to my house, they would pick up a book and look through and Oh, that's really cool and stuff, but they never read them. Uh, right. We would go to movies and, and, and watch comic book movies and watch TV shows and stuff, but it wasn't like they were comic book friends. They just yeah. knew the fringe Things that everybody they knew that Batman was Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent was Superman. They knew all that stuff. Um, but then I started going to a store in Pottstown. After the original store, I was getting my comics enclosed and it was sold to somebody else. I, I have a business card of it over there yet from like, God, it had to be like 1990 or 88, something like that. That was the first time I started hanging out at a store. And I was friends with the people that owned it and worked there. And sometimes I would help them out if they had like a little hotel show or something. Um, but we didn't hang out on the weekends or anything like outside of just going to the store. But 
from that point on, any store I went to, I did at least hang out for an hour or two talking to whoever was behind the counter and sometimes a couple people that came in, but that it never went any further than that. It was always like, hey, good to see you this week. God, you got your books. Here's what I'm reading, blah, blah. And then you left. But meeting all of you through Golden Eagle, that was the first time I ever had comic book friends and hung out outside of that and got together and talked comics and read and gave each other advice on what to read. Hey, you'd like this, or you might like this. And that's how I got to read a lot of stuff I never would have considered before was just going to Golden Eagle and meeting all of you. I wonder how we, we made the the jump from just hanging out in the store to hanging out outside the store. Does anybody remember that? Like how, why did, why did we do it? How did we do, you know, like, well, I, cause I can remember, I don't, I don't know what year it was, but I'm fairly certain it was at least Jamie and Scott. They went to go see a tap dance show that I did up in Allentown. Um, and so I know that we kind of would support each other with like life events, but yeah. I wonder, I wonder how we got, it's all lost to time and memory. I, I don't, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I think it was when I invited you all down to my apartment around Christmas, Carleen and I had a little Christmas party. And I, yeah. I said, hey, can I have these guys over? And she's like, yeah, sure. And that's how it, that, that's what I remember. Right. And Alex in, inviting us when Brian was away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was, a, he was an effortless roommate because he was like never in my face and never playing loud music, never watching the TV when I wanted to watch TV. No, but then I got none of the good parts either. Where like you have friends over and you have, Oh, there's girls in my house. Like, no, that, that was not. A, you know. <laughs> I don't know. For me, funny. like we, that, that transition into like each other's homes was like, because of working at the comic book store together, it was like, we were always together anyway. So like, it didn't feel weird. So like I would, um, I played like, in the early days, I played magic with, with, uh, well, Dave and his brother, Nate and, and their friend, Josh. Um, and we also did a lot of role playing together. So we were hanging out and I think Jamie might've joined us some of the time. I don't remember if Jamie role played with us or not. Um, but then Scott, Jamie and Bill and I for a long time, like probably two years, Every Sunday night, they came over to my house. I was still living at my parents' house, and we played um, Mahjong for hours every single Sunday. Hmm. And we just like like we we started just like playing games, and then Bill had Mahjong one day, and then that was it. We never we played only Mahjong for like yeah. two years. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. And and we always it was so funny, you know. You get in these routines; it's so weird. We had Cool Ranch Doritos and Country Time <laughs> Lemonade in the cans. I do remember that from some. Why? Why? Who knows? But that's what we did every <laughs> single Sunday. That's like uh, we always had to have peanut M and peanut. Oh M &Ms, yeah, right? peanut M and M's. Yeah. 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 Yep. John used to. John Duffy had a. I remember oh, yeah, getting inviting. Have to a, yeah. a role play session at his house. Yep. And I was, yep. I was always like, I don't, that, that did, wasn't my thing, but we did different, um, different DC role playing games, different campaigns, I guess. Yeah. 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 I remember one. I don't, that's but my memory. See, Peter, you, I think you were playing the wrong games or like the wrong rules or whatever, because you would be a fantastic role player as an actor oh, yeah. and stuff, right. As a performer, it, it's perfect for you. And now like, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, like the role playing rules were like, it was rules heavy. And now mm -hmm. they're trying to transition to where like the rules don't get in the way of the story. And like, it's way, way more like, yeah, you roll dice once in a while, but mostly you talk and stuff happens. Right. Like, yeah. And I think you would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. You're just probably playing the wrong rule set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up on Dungeons and Dragons, Starfleet battles, car wars, DC role playing games, Star Wars role playing games. It was a lot of fun. I didn't know you were a gamer, Shane. I didn't know. Right out of high school. Yeah, high school, junior high to high school, more than anything else. And then a little bit out of that, but not much past that. Because everybody moved away. There was nobody else for me to game to. And I never found a group to do that. So it's, I oh, mean, I have. joined us when we were playing at Golden Eagle. We, 
the game that I played in the back of Golden Eagle was GURP Super's game. Oh, sure. Yeah. Scott had been Scott Lesher had been running a game for like 10 years, and it was the same. Like, and it would just be like a, it was just like the Avengers, right? It was a revolving cast, like whoever <laughs> could game for six months and then they would have life events and then they would come back a year and a half later and jump back in the campaign. And then I, they introduced me because like I was there, I was there one Sunday, just randomly buying comics on a Sunday. I had no idea that gaming was happening and like the doors open to the back room and I'm like, well, Scott, what's Scott doing back there? Cause I knew <laughs> Scott cause he would buy his comics at Golden Eagle when I worked there, sure. you know? Like in 1992, I've known Scott that long, and and I was like, "What's going on back here?" And I and I see <laughs> Nate, who I also used to role play with, and and Jamie. I'm like, "What is happening?" And they're like, "Oh, we're <laughs> we're playing uh, Gurp Supers." I'm like, "You're playing Gurp Supers, and I, how do I get involved?" And Scott's like, "Well, make a character, and you're involved." Like, and then that was it, you know. And I was just right in it. I remember and watching. Was, I watched a couple of those sessions. Not not many, one or two, but I, I didn't play. I was just watching. Oh, so but over fun. on my on my over on my one bookshelf, I have the three different DC role playing games. I have my original D and D game and the expert roles. I have the old players handbook, the two sets for the captain's rules to Starfleet battles, and then I have the Star Wars role playing game and a couple of the source books. Yet that's wow. that's all I have left for my gaming stuff. But it's it still sits over there. I did a I did a uh, a session or whatever they're called with when I, when I was in high school or junior high with Rob, Matt, Chris, man, I think we were at Matt's basement because I think he had a bar down there and Neil Selinsky. Is that oh, his Selasky. name? Selasky. Yeah. He yeah. was running it. So it yeah. was on one end was like the older golden Eagle fist street guys. And on the other end was our young punks, you know, like every year. <laughs> we had to work to get two things were going on at once. And I remember going in and going, do I have to do a voice or something? Like, <laughs> I don't understand what this is. Um, uh, and it was some campaign, whatever. And it was a DC campaign I'm, I'm, because one of the guys was Batman and blah, 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 blah. So I do remember that. And, and you would think, I would be into, I mean, because I used to create, as most comic book readers did, I used to create my own characters and sure. draw and trace and, you know, do all yeah. that stuff. But no, I never really got, never really got into it. Um, That's I have so a, funny that you knew Neil, because like he, he used I to work him the Fifth Street like store, yeah. grade school and high school. So he was a number of years older than me, but I like in our, I'm pretty sure he went to Sacred Heart I, and then Holy Name. And I, I knew him somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, he again, and I think he was a senior when I was a freshman, maybe, um, or even he was a senior when I was eighth grade, and so, but somehow I knew like from school, church, I don't, I don't know, right? But yeah. like I knew who he was, yeah. Because when he was in Crusaders, it was like, oh, I remember you, you know, and then it was like, <laughs> oh, Lynn's his sister, right, or whatever, and it was like, what? I don't. <laughs> Wait, who? Who Lynn? Wait, not no, Lynn, Lynn and Lynn and him are. Are related. They're not brother and sister, but they're something. They're not oh. brother and sister, but they're uh oh, I didn't know or that. she Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, because I'll and, and Lynn's younger sister was two years younger than me, and we were friends in high school. And yeah, Slasky. I'm pretty sure I'm I I, sw- I swear that's right. Ne- so Neil Yeah, Slasky. S- Neil yeah. Selesky. Oh, Selesky, not Slasky. And Lynn Slasky. Slasky. It was close. Yeah, they're, they're from the same gene pool, probably. <laughs> that last name. Are they cousins or something? I swear they're related, which is weird if their names are almost the same. Right. I don't know. Somehow they're, well, let's say, maybe they're not related. Maybe they're just connected somehow, yeah. which is how, and that's how Kevin got him in to Crusaders was through Lynn. Okay. Oh. So I don't know. I don't remember the connection now, but... <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Wait, Whatever. so the, speaking of, of, you know, long-time CGS listeners and going back, I don't know if you know, remember the name Bill Stanley? Excuse me. No. It doesn't. no. So, uh, CGS listener from New York um, is a piano player. Um, I mean, more than just a piano player, but, I mean, we – we connected because he would play for auditions in New York for theater auditions and things like that. Like that was something that we had in common. Um, 
So he said, he emailed me and said, so glad that the OG geeks are back. Uh, as I listened to Brian eviscerating AMC for their new pricing scheme, I was reminded of his classic rant about mobile companies charging extra for texting service. <laughs> he says, I don't, I don't believe we, the CGS audience, ever heard how long Brian's vow of, of abstinence from text messaging lasted, or if it continues to this day. I wish I, <laughs> I, wish I could provide an episode number for reference. Rest assured, it was way back in the day. I'm hoping you could revisit the topic on the podcast. Your loyal, <laughs> loyal and aging listener, Bill Stanley. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't. I I refused to pay for texting. So once once texting became like always included in your plan, like whenever the plans like just it sort of became like this basic tier that included yeah. texting. That's when I then you know re embraced text messages, but. Yeah, he's right. Like I was, I was. I mean, it was a complete scam. It was a free thing that they were just like, "Oh, people like this. We could charge for this." And then all of a sudden, I couldn't text anymore because it costs, you know, three cents per text or whatever bullshit it was back in the day. You know? Yeah, crazy. I don't think I text much before it was free either. I mean, we might have had X amount of free texts, and we reserved that for emergencies back and forth to, between Carlene and I. But I don't think we did much of that until it was like you said included in anything because it was free. And then it wasn't, yeah, right? Because then it yeah. was popular, and like anything, they're like, "Oh, we can charge for something that's popular." Okay, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a rant. I do not remember. I don't remember that one. Uh, <laughs> I've had that rant them. multiple times with multiple people, <laughs> so like I remember that one very well. <laughs> See, another classic yeah. case that they they know us they yeah. know sometimes more than we we remember what we say. Oh. I could I could actually do it just today. I could start a new rant. Let me update him on a new <laughs> level of of text. Right, so, so right, now it's like fifty percent of the texts we send aren't texts, right? Because if we're on iPhones, when we send to iPhone to iPhone, it's not actually a text message. It's a encrypted communication that goes to Apple, and then Apple sends to you know the other yeah. person. When you get the green bubble, it's like now that's a sent as a as an SMS to another cell phone, right? Um, so the European Union just today now made it official that Apple is going to have to open iMessage up to third parties. And exactly what that means, we still remains to be seen. But like right now, if you want to do a messaging app, which are plenty, you know, Facebook and Signal and all these, there's like dozens of them, right? WhatsApp. You can you can't send it through iMessage because iMessage is Apple's messaging app that they also allow you to do send SMSs through so that you as an iPhone user only have to use one app and you don't have to have two because that would be annoying if I opened up iMessage to text you guys, but then I had to remember which friends were on Yeah. And then open up my text message app. That would be stupid. Well, now the European Union's like Apple. You have to open up iMessage to allow third-party integration. And it's like, as an iPhone user, I don't want that because I want to know that when I'm messaging people on iMessage, that it's like if I'm messaging a blue bubble, it is secure. Like I could text anything I want. I could talk about illegal shit. Nobody can see it because it's completely encrypted end to end, right? So it's a private thing with you and I, right? Yeah. Not that I'm texting illegal shit, but just theoretically, no, but... I love the idea that no one can read our messages, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. And but if they integrate third party shit, now I'm not like I might not be sure if this is going to WhatsApp, which is Facebook, and they say it's end to end encrypted, but do I believe that? And fuck no, I don't believe that. There's no way, right? Like all you know, whatever. So I'm super irritated about text messaging again. <laughs> Thanks to the European Union and their heavy handed stuff, which is not really protecting. the. They think they're protecting the consumer and actually they're just going to make the consumer, you know, open to more scams and vulnerabilities and everything. And it's bullshit. And, yeah, you know, I'm not happy. Everything old is new. Everything yeah. new is oh, old. Yeah. Again. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's, yeah everything it's new is old again. Yeah. And And how long is that before it comes over here? Well, if they have to do it, they won't really like. They probably won't restrict it to Europe because it would be a like a nightmare yeah. to. So it'll probably mm. just, yeah, it'll just happen. And <sighs> like, okay, great. 
Get the tin can and string out again. But hopefully Apple will make it so like if you're texting another phone, another iPhone, there'll still be something unique about the display so that we know that this yeah. is safe to text. And if I get some random plaid bubble, I'm not going to respond because I don't want to, right? You, you know, yeah, that's what other apps are for. If I want to use another app, I'll use another app. That's what I would hope too. Yeah, so. I always, I always like, I, I just, I don't know why I didn't know it was to that level of detail, but I always felt better seeing a blue bubble pop up back and forth. Like, oh, okay. They got an iPhone. We're good. <laughs> it works too. Cause it, there's like peer pressure and people want to get phones. So their friends don't ostracize them because they got the stupid <laughs> green bubble. It's true. It's like a proven sociological Is it really? thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's funny. I just, I just, I, you know, I got the iPhone and and started with it because I had the iPod that I got in 2006 to listen to podcasts. And I started to buy some music, not a lot. I would download most of CDs, but then Carlene got a video iPod and we were downloading movies to that when we would go on trips. And I'm like, well, crap, I have all these movies on here now. I want, I want to keep that going. So I just kept with Apple and that's why I've kept Apple iPhone app. Uh, iPad, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like the new class war because of a, a text color bubble. <laughs> I mean, there's some truth in it, right? Yeah, good marketing. Yeah, jeez. Do we want to talk about any geeky things? I'm sure Darren would want us to talk about something. Um, or do we have anything left in us for tonight? Or I watched the that? first episode of Mando last night. Yeah, me mm-hmm. too. I was a little underwhelmed. It was good. Don't get me wrong, but it felt like a lot of wasted time for 37 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I think what I, I'm trying to be vague here so I don't spoil anything. Yeah. Yeah. I liked how so far this is sort of like a side quest. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there will end up being some larger overarching story that unfolds. Sure. Sure. But I'm I, I'm sort of digging that they're just like, hey, I'm going to go do this thing. I got to get this thing to help this thing so that this other thing can happen. And you're like, yeah, that can't be the whole season. Yeah. So this is interesting, right? Like, so that part I like. Mm-hmm. As for like that particular episode, I thought it was like very medium. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy, Shane, because we're talking about a Star Wars TV show as being like, it was fine. Yeah, it was all right. Like, was it like a the couple third of years ago, season, we would have right? killed ourselves yeah. for it. Third you know? se- yeah, yeah. Third, Five years ago, we'd have been like... Third season of a new, you know, character. Yeah, right. It's yeah. Like but boy, Pedro Pascal, you know, Mandalorian and Last of Us, like, he's, yeah. he's on all the geek. Thank God, God you didn't the yeah. Thank God you didn't mention Max Lord because that was abysmal. Oh, I liked um, him as Max Lord, though. I liked him as Max Lord. <sighs> I probably would have liked it more if it wasn't set in the movie that it was set in. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I love, I love him in any, in almost anything I see him in. So, yeah. Um, did you I watched... watch Picard? Where, what yes. episode are we at? I'm totally I caught up yet. on that. I'm not too. finished season two yet. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a hard oh. season to get through. Yeah. Season get, that's why I rough. haven't finished it. Yeah. <laughs> you skip ahead. You, yeah. You, you can watch this. New if stuff. you watch the last five minutes of the last episode of second season, you'll be good. <laughs> And to just go right to the third one. I mean, there's there's no other than characters. There's no overlap whatsoever. No. In the story, you know. No, like there's you, there's no, not really. But boy, that what third, happens in what happens in season two stays in season two for the most part. It really does. It <laughs> yeah. really does. But boy, not you know. I won't say anything. But that third ep- this episode yeah. went somewhere. I had no. I was like, what? What? What's going on? Yeah. Holy. This is I'm this should have been season one. <laughs> well, I did like season one. I like season one quite a bit. It's certainly better than season two. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I just mean in think, terms of what we wanted. You know, but I think, but I think if you gave if you gave everybody in season one all these characters that from the original cast, it would have been blase. This is a little bit more special. You get to see a little bit more of what happened to Picard and you get a little bit more of his history after the Enterprise. Yeah. yeah. So that now it makes this a little bit more special to me. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that season one couldn't have been better. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think that Absolutely. like season one was like, oh my God, we're seeing Picard for the first time in 20 years or whatever. This is really exciting. And there's some cool and, things that are happening. You know, but like overall, it was a pretty average show. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. You know? And I'm saying like I was very excited about it. And then I was like, eh, it was fine. You know, I was Whereas, very excited about season two. And then oh, oh, oh. that's I got through it, but that was rough. Well, I think yeah, the I other can... thing, too, with the with Picard was especially maybe for our generation is they were going back to the next generation universe. Right. Just to, to I yeah. know it's not I know that's not what they call it, but it wasn't discovery. It wasn't the uh jj abrams star trek yeah. movies yeah what right? the heck Which, they call that another universe what the, do they call that the kelvin verse kelvin verse yeah. yeah it was the continuation of the main timeline you know from from the original series through to what was the last one voyager i guess and enterprise i guess you could say too yeah you know what yeah, i mean enterprise. so and and then the next generation movies right so it was like oh we're back in what I grew up with, I'll, I'll just speak for myself, you know, because the next generation was sort of my Star Trek. Um, was that your gateway? Yeah. I mean, okay. I had I had seen maybe some of the original episodes, like, I don't know if they showed up on like PBS or whatever, like you would, you know, I flip through and I'm like, oh, okay. And I probably saw, I think I saw Star Trek four in the movie theater. That was the first one I saw in the movie theater. Four was the first one I saw in the theater, but I had watched one, two, and three on HBO and videotapes. I mean, I had watched, I had watched classic Star Trek my entire life. Anytime it was on reruns, right. I had Star Trek Mego dolls. I had my dad took two pieces of wood and a hinge and made a communicator for me to flip back and forth. Yeah. Um. So yeah, since I was five, I was a Star Trek fan. Right. I mean, I, I had enough knowledge and probably interest that that's why I sat there in 1987 to watch the yeah. new star trek right so those were my people in fact i'll go on youtube rabbit holes and just watch some of the best ep um, moments of star trek next generation so to see picard and to see like yeah i want to see picard but i also i also want to see how things have developed the ships the uniforms the yeah. starfleet you know that's also the aspect that i really like about dipping back into this main universe so i think that's why this season three is so like has me just juiced because it's it's not only picard it's not only the next generation cast it's more it's just it just it's like oh okay yeah this I is the this that. is the cobra kai version of star trek that i yeah. wanted right i keep going back to cobra kai because it's the best formula of mixing old and new um and, the, and as i said this third this Third. I almost texted you again, Shane, because I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> did you see this episode?" Yeah, any oh, anytime because me, oh. I have nobody else to talk to Star Trek about really anymore. I mean, Jamie oh. and I did it. That was that was who I talked most to about Star Trek, and a couple guys at at my old job. But there's there's nobody at the new job that's like that, like Star Trek geeky. Um, yeah, definitely uh, catch up, Brian, because if we record on another on another Thursday night and yeah. you're able to watch it before we record, then we get, we're up to date and. I'm not, I, look, it may not stick the landing, uh, you know, no, no, no. I'm, <laughs> they have a bad track record, but it's a new showrunner, yeah. right? Like, I don't know that. It yeah. This, be. this Terry Metallis or whatever his name is. Um, he was, he was actually in a small cameo of the very last next generation episode, all good things. Really? And that, yeah. And then I think he was writing and maybe he was part of season one and two but now he's show running it and when you when you look at him like yeah he looks like a star trek geek like i'm like okay like that's probably why we're getting what we're getting so yeah well and, and um oh gosh it just left my head what the hell was i gonna say oh oh lower so if if next generation was your gateway and and everything since um if you have not and i I can't remember if you did or not. Lower decks is amazing. Yeah, I'm still I'm still stuck on Discovery, like because I gotta watch okay. things in order. Like I just started um, season two of Clone Wars. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Okay. That's where I am because I'm watching that in too. order. Okay. See, I like Clone Wars a lot. I like Rebels better. Yeah. After I've you heard get that past before. the first season of Rebels, I really love everything they did in that show. That's because that's more of the characters, right? Like the the what I heard anyway, like some of the main characters show up in that. In like one episode uh, spots and only uh, okay. like two. 
okay. m- maybe three. It's not, it's not original Star Wars heavy in that way. Yeah. For for Rebels, it's it's new cast of characters, but it's just mm-hmm. it was interesting to me. Well, season two of Clone Wars is already better than season one. I'm only like six oh, episodes and, in, and it and that. it continues to get better. Yeah. Um. And and for her, I did not like Ahsoka at first. One of my favorite characters in Star Wars history, just the way they have developed that character through time, I I love. Yeah. You so you've seen Ahsoka on the live action version, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the adult, yeah. the older version. Yeah. I don't see this younger version growing up to be Rosaria Dawson. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not that's not Ahsoka. I'm sorry. I know people love her because she's like, she's in every geek thing. She's in Daredevil. She's in, you know, it's like, that's one of the, you know me, I hate when they recycle actors. And I was like, when I saw a video, because I I get spoiled a lot on YouTube because they just post things on the homepage yeah. or whatever. And I was like, who's playing Ahsoka? No, no, that's not Ahsoka. No, I'm I sorry. think for, for me, I, I would agree with you um, until I watched Rebels. Oh, when she's with some older things that Rebels. some things that happen in Rebels okay. made me feel a little bit better about that. All right, maybe I'll change my mind. But yeah, because it, yeah, during Clone Wars was not one of my favorites at all. The end of Clone Wars, her story gets much better, and then that lost season that they just put out on Disney Plus that was amazing and had a gr- fantastic Ahsoka arc, two yeah. of them actually, which is just beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't mind really her as like. A, I don't mind her as a character. Do. I just when I when I heard the actor that they picked i was like okay yeah it's, it's, it's same thing with katie sackoff i mean she's not that great of an actress you know and i was <laughs> like she was great as you know in battle star like yeah. but she's not like you know she's not like a great actor. i i i i don't mind her as bo katan she couldn't hear you because you mumbled it Peter. I know, right. yeah. <laughs> but yet when she was on the flash as a as a villain i didn't like that oh she was not good at that no, no. yeah i didn't i didn't like that character at all that's, I think, my problem with when people want to fan cast and they want to fan cast the same actor in multiple things. It's like, you don't know if they're going to be successful the second time around just because they were successful the first time around. You know, like it just yeah. could have been, it could have been the the ensemble, it could have been the directors, it could have been yeah. whatever. Um Who's another one? Like, you know, they want Idris Elba. Like, okay, he's a good actor, but they want Idris Elba to be in everything, right? And it's like, okay, yeah. okay, slow down. The man's getting older. Let him, you know, relax, <laughs> you know. He doesn't have to be everything just because he's already been in everything. It's like they want to do the, you know, like the awards. They do the EGOT. You know, you win the Emmys, the Grammys, the Oscars, yeah. and the Tonys. It's like, oh, you got to do a Marvel movie, DC movie, Star Wars, and Star Trek. It's like, oh, do they really? No, <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah. All right. So, so. For what it's worth, I thought Rosario <laughs> Dawson did a great job. Yeah, okay. I did. So, I like did I said, too. It might change my mind. Yeah, right. she's great I'm, in Daredevil. She's great. In yeah, the night. I'm, and she's for, a nice person. Yeah. I remember in Heroes Con, I, we just randomly were talking and I turned to my right and I was like, oh, that's Rosario Dawson right there. She's like literally <laughs> right next to me. And I know Buzz knew her as a young kid. And, um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. But like, again, she, like she was the headliner for DMZ. And, you know, it's like, and then I see people fan cast and they're like, what about Rosario Dawson? I'm like, oh, God, Rosario Dawson. <laughs> okay. She's done enough. Can we get some new people? You know? Well, when you get to when you get to Star Trek Lower Decks, there's a whole mess of comedy to it, but it doesn't feel forced to me. And there's a lot of Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space. There's a lot of Easter eggs for all of that because it's all yeah. in that time period. Yeah. That's that's a phenomenal a phenomenal show if you're a fan of that stuff. Cool. Comics themselves, I, I again, I've gone like two weeks without reading much of anything. So it's I'm reading. Horrendous. I got the ultra tier and I'm, I'm determined to stay up on all of the dawn of DC new stuff, okay. like DC's rebranding, right. Mm-hmm. Or whatever they're calling it. Um, and it's only been a few books yet. Action comics. Superman is coming out shortly, but eventually it's like a new green arrow, a new, um, uh, a new green lantern. I think Hawkman's getting a book. Like it, it, you know, there's a bunch of new titles coming out and i'm 
I'm going to stay on top. And I, I, so far the Superman stuff has been enjoyable. Um, it's been a really good read. What I'm finding is I st- the other day I was like, oh, this must be what people felt like after the crisis. Older generations who had been reading DC for like 20 years, 30 years, and now suddenly reading post-crisis DC, and maybe they weren't fans of like what they were doing with Superman and Wonder Woman, or like they were like, where's Barry Allen, blah, blah. Like I feel like, so I read, uh, there's a storyline in Flash called The One Minute War. Yep. And these aliens come down and they 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 can harness the speed force. Um, they freeze the entire world, but all the speedsters can still obviously run around because they're connected to the speed force too. And it's the artwork is by Roger Cruz, if you remember him from the 90s on the X-Men comics. Um, he was very much in like the Joe Mad style, you know, okay. anime style, you know. Um and it's a it's a it's a totally fun storyline. It's not super deep. It's just the speedsters fight, fighting aliens. The ships, it, the alien ships look like Hasbro made them. You know, like back in their, their simple designs. And part of me wanted to go, oh, I wish the spaceship designs were cooler. I wish the alien costumes. Were, but then I went, I said, you know what? If I was reading this as a kid in the 80s, I would love this. Like, I would love it. And I I realized that there was a part of me that even said to me, oh, yeah, these comics shouldn't be for me, right? And we always yeah. we've always talked about that, right? Like, yeah. comics should be for younger generations, even if every generation can enjoy them. But really, the primary target should be you know, bring younger kids, even. whether, you know, that's a whole other conversation. But I was like, that was, that really sort of hit me. And I think that's why I'm enjoying the DC books. Cause I'm just, I'm like, just pretend it's 1986 and 87 again. And you're reading a whole new slate of characters and um, you're, you're watching this world build. Plus I'm reading it on the app and I'm, <laughs> I'm tallying how many books I read and I'm already up to like a hundred and some wow. in, in dollars in dollars. Oh, okay. Like okay. if I bought cover price, yeah, it would be like a hundred. I think I'm up to 120 cause I paid 99. So if I read $200 worth of comics, mm-hmm. that's like getting DCBS discount, right? Like now, yep. I'm, you know, so I am determined to use that app. I'm reading those books. Um, I'm reading injustice for the first time. So You'll have to tell me, like, I'm sort of out of the loop. Like, I I definitely feel older. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on with DC. I don't know what they want me to read, what I shouldn't read. I, yeah. I don't know. There's so many titles, and they're like specials and things. So, Peter, you be my guide. Be my spirit guide here. And <laughs> send me, like, the links or whatever to, like, because I will read along with you. Okay. So I want to, if it's new stuff, I want to read it because I also have the subscription and I want to get my money's worth. And so like, let yep. me read it. And now that Clara's working at the store, I can be like, oh, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. read that. You should read yeah. this. Let your customers know, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um. So. And it's, yeah. like I said, it's, it's, I, th- I remember saying one time, it's not that you outgrow comics. It's that you get a little more discerning about what you want to read. Right. And if they don't capture that feel of what you can, whatever you consider to be your golden age or whatever you consider to be when Marvel and DC were at its height again or whatever, you know, sometimes I read some stories now, some comics now, and I'm like, this is, this is so not for me. And I, I, I'm not going to rail against it because I realize it's not for me, you know? Um, and I'm sure some of the dawn of DC stuff will be that way because Sometimes when DC does revamps, they either get too dark, like New 52, or they get too continuity heavy, like some of the other. Re- and this one feels like a total kind of, we're just going to go from here and it's going to skew a little younger, probably. Um, but I'm I'm determined to do it. So, yeah, I can do that. So what is the, what is like the overall, what did you just say it was called? Dawn of, Dawn Dawn of, of DC. DC. Mm-hmm. Dawn of DC. See, like, why when I'm in this app is there not a giant banner that says Dawn of DC yeah. and you tap and here's all the comments? Like, that, I, yeah. 
I will say the app designer in me, it just wants to slap some people because the Marvel app sucks. The DC app sucks. It's like, what guys? I can't find a good way to organize what I download, what I try to read. It's, it's a hodgepodge mess. It drives me insane. It's all over the place. I accidentally, like when we were doing the vertigo thing, like somehow I favorited some and then I added some to a list and I'm like, I don't know what I did different. Why are I went to the list and then only some of them were there. I'm like, I mean, this is literally my job and I don't know how to use this app. So it's very poorly designed. It also kills me that it's trash. Basically I I download stuff. And if I don't go onto the app to renew the certificate every few days, I can't read it. Like I forgot to do it when we went somewhere this weekend and I went to read something when I had a half hour. It's like, whoop, we can't bring this up. The certificate expired. I'm like, motherfucker, you got to be kidding me. So I got to go on there before I leave, redownload all these things, at least open them up so that the certificate's renewed, then hope they work for a few days to a week. If I'm not connected to the internet for whatever reason, it, uh, if I download it, it should be mine. Right. That's insane because they know how long my subscription is. Yeah. Like I got a year. So it should never expire. All the books I download should be good until that year. And then at the end of that year, it can check and see if I got another year. Exactly. (laughs) That's what I, that's exactly what I thought. The other thing I think they should do, and they took it away on YouTube too, is that you can't, you can't search or when you get into a title, they show the oldest first instead of the newest first. And like YouTube, you know, YouTube took away the, the function where you could go oldest first, right? You could go back and watch the oldest videos on a channel and they took that away. You know, you can do popular and new, but you can't do older anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like, you know, when you have a, uh, like the flash series, although you can put in the search function, you could put flash 790 and the actual issue will eventually come up. So I don't, so at least that's good. But if you don't know the number, and yeah. you go to the flash title and you don't know what volume it is. And then you got to go scroll all the way down to the la- the most recent issue. Yeah. It's, it's not designer friendly. And they're missing out. I'll go all ahead. this stuff downloaded. I can't organize it for shit. Like there's <laughs> no way to sort it in order of a title or newest number. to oldest or yeah. Yeah, by weekly release. It's terrible. And, and they're, and they're missing out Go by ahead, not having like public playlist, like like a like a reading yeah. list. Yeah. Like Peter, you should be able to create like the new DC reading list, and I should be able to subscribe to that. And then I see it, and I'm like, oh, read that, read that, read that. And right. It says read or didn't read or whatever. And like then I'll know I'm caught up, and then I don't have to do the work because they don't want to do the work for me. By, I mean, how can you have a big event thing like this? Where you're like relaunching titles and there's not a banner where I can yeah. read into it. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I'm I'm but, looking now just to see if there's something out there and I can't find anything that would say Dawn of DC. I mean, it's 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 legit like there's no one on the team. And again, Marvel app, exact same problem. Mm-hmm. There's nobody on either of these teams who actually reads comics because if they had <laughs> one person one person who read comics this app, all both of these apps would be 100 percent different because they'd be like you're doing it all wrong this is not how people read comics end of discussion and if you want to have a, an explore tab at the bottom for people who are new and don't know about comics great have the explore tab and, and spoon feed them some things like, that they should get started with so here here's how you know some some priorities are messed up here's a banner dc studios chapter one gods and monsters all kinds of stuff that's related to the movie announcements tv show announcements that's fine to a certain extent but like you said brian there's no dawn of dc here's the new thing go there shazam family because yeah, the movie's coming out well that's the yeah and that's the, like, the main banner there is lazarus planet which that's a pretty good new i mean not a pretty good it's just a new story arc that's been going through that's a banner here right the one minute war legends of gotham gotham knights the gilded city but nothing with the dawn of DC. It, it, I, I'm begging if anybody listening knows anybody working on either of these apps, I'm begging you to, to give them my contact information and I will consult for them <laughs> for free and tell them how to design this app. I, I'm a hundred percent real. This is legitimately what I do for a living. And cause this is these, both of these apps are utter failures. So they want you to, that's because they want you to hunt and peck, right? Like it was, it was my argument about like, we used to go to convention. No, that, for, 
for back issue bins that, where that, where they like don't alphabetize the back issue bins and you're like no oh that's so you and that, some people would say that that makes sense because you're gonna buy more stuff that way maybe oh not we've me. already I walk paid away. peter me too <laughs> well some some people spend a lot of yeah. time and then they find things they weren't looking for but we already pay so they don't need to make money off of us. They right. the way they're going to make money off of this is by getting us to subscribe again and we're going to subscribe again because we love the experience. And right now we hate the experience, so they're on thin <laughs> ice. So like what are they doing? They got their whole if we had to buy the comics, Peter, maybe that would make sense. Yeah. If we had to buy each comic, right? Right. But we don't cuz we've already paid. Yeah. Oh, I don't hate so the it, it's, it's not like net- it's not easy, but you know. I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> well, it's I'm getting my a, money's worth. But it's saving it's, me a lot from from. It's out frustrating of my me. <laughs> <laughs> when the Marvel app, no matter what I do, when I download something on that, I can't read it offline at all. At least with the DC stuff, the certificate thing kind of sucks. But I do sometimes, most times, remember to do that before I leave. And but the Marvel one, no matter what I try to open up when I'm offline, it will not open. Even if I just downloaded it that morning, go away to to watch Ben play soccer, and I try to open it up, it won't it won't read. It's it's insane. Mm. Someone said, "Well, try the update on the app or this iOS." No, I've done all that. It still doesn't work. Tether your phone. Do you have hmm? tether data on your phone? Well, you by that time I just and then by that time I just pull out the novel that I carry with me and start reading that and give up on the iPad for <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Marvel needs to do something. I, I, they, they haven't really done anything that's kind of kicked off a new whatever, you know, like they're, um, they have events coming up, but there's nothing I feel like line wide, like maybe, maybe they don't feel like they have a need to do that, but I, I don't, I'm not rushing to read anything from them right now. Um, no, but, and, but they had a lot of, restarts over the last few years i mean dc yeah. did too but i think marvel did a lot more it seems well yeah i mean they're totally in the hole whenever they get a new creative team or a new season or whatever a new direction yeah. it's always restart the the captain america stuff does actually um interest me a little bit so the writers on at least one of them is um uh well they're coming up on a on a captain america event called cold war and it's going to have, you know, all the characters like um, uh, Winter Soldier, Falcon. Uh, well, he is Captain America right now. Sharon Carter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the writers of that, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, um, they're on at least one of the Captain America books. I don't know if they're on both. Um, that Those issues are up to like 10 or 11 right now i do actually want to read that and end this event because i like them and they're writing that star trek book that i talked to you about the last i'm trying to track those down i'm I'm intrigued enough that i i ordered the next issue that's coming out and i'm trying to track down the the first like five or six yeah and they also they also wrote the kang miniseries that i think i told you about brian the the kang the conqueror is like an origin story they're they're good. They're a writing team that's they kind of work well together, and I think they come from TV. I don't remember, um, so I'm interested in that Captain America book. But as a whole, I don't know what else. Like, there's nothing else sort of grabbing me to to jump into for Marvel. Um, so yeah, I'll give you some suggestions. I might even yeah. c- keep continuing on the Vertigo stuff, like because some of yeah. like I want to finish those titles that we and I actually. Like we read the first three months worth of the new stuff. And in the second three months, what comes out? Oh, there's like a Jonah Hex miniseries, um, uh, Skin that. Graft, which is yeah, like. I had that too. Yeah. Like there's, they're coming up on some. It's interesting how these early vertical titles are still steeped in with some DC characters like kid eternity sandman jonah hex tattooed man like even though vertigo was separate from dc at least in this first couple uh these this like half a year maybe the first year they were like no we can still do dc properties but the vertigo way and then eventually they'll start throwing in more of the these are completely new 
like we haven't gotten to preacher yet. We haven't gotten to invisibles yet. We haven't gotten to, I don't know what else, um, trans metropolitan, even though that, that started under another imprint. Like we haven't gotten to those long running hundred bullets, fables, scalped. Like we haven't gotten to that part of vertigo yet, you know? So, and they're on the app <laughs> if you can find them. Yeah. <laughs> if you can find them. Yeah. <laughs> I did see they're pushing for whatever reason they they got the whole Elseworlds thing and they got yeah my guess like the Batman really, stuff yeah I think we should read that I haven't read it like in so long and I, don't, I haven't yeah. read it I in think years. in my head it holds up but, but man I don't know maybe it maybe man. it wasn't as good as I thought it was but that was the first Elseworlds right and that was yeah, it sure was before they memorable. were branded that way yeah we could read that that yeah. I read um. I recently read because it's Mike Mignola on artwork, right? Like pre Hellboy, Mike mm-hmm. Mignola. I read yeah. for the first time Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom Triumph and Torment, which was also Mike Mignola <coughs> artwork. And but it was written by Roger Stern. So I was kind of like, it was a graphic novel. It was a hardcover graphic novel, like 1988 oh. or something like that. No, I never read that. And I was a little worried because Roger Stern is very hit and miss for me. And I was like, okay, but I'm sure the Mignola artwork is probably fantastic. The story is actually really good too. And um, that, and Mike's artwork on that, just, I'm not saying anything that people don't already know. Um, But especially that late 80s Mike Mignola, like when he was right on the verge of becoming Hellboy, the, the Hellboy artist, and Cosmic Odyssey, Elseworlds. Uh, or or Gotham by Gaslight, and this yeah. um, he did like the Phantom Stranger miniseries. He did World of Krypton with John Byrne, and then this graphic novel, plus other things. Uh, I mean, he did the covers for Death in the Family, right? And that's I think yeah. the first time that I yeah, that's probably the his first name. time I learned I, his name. Yeah, and then I was disappointed when the artwork inside didn't look like the covers. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happens so often. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's like one of my, like, I understand it from like a, a business perspective, but as a fan, like I hate that cover artists are different than the interior, yeah. especially when the interior artist is what I think is better than the cover artist or just different. Like if Simonson's drawing the inside, I want a Simonson cover. If Ramita mm-hmm. Jr. is drawing the inside, I want a Ramita Jr. I don't care. I don't care if you get my next favorite artist. I don't want him to draw the cover of my John Romita Jr. book. You know yeah. what I mean? That's not how it works. Yep. You know, but I get it. Like they're busy. They can barely crank out 22 pages. They don't have time for 23 or whatever. Or, you know, yeah. so like I understand, but it's it sucks as a fan when you either you get the the but the worst is the fake, you know, like, oh look at this beautiful artwork. Oh, and then you open it up and like wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, an Alex Ross book. I don't think so, pal. You know? <laughs> I'm trying to uh I'm trying to make my way through one piece. Oh, oh yeah. I've so never like tried a thousand that. chapters and I'm on like chapter sixty or something. <laughs> There's literally a thousand. Yeah. And and yeah, I'm on I'm on fifty one. So I have, you know, only nine hundred and forty nine to go. You know? <laughs> and of course right. a new one comes out every month or whatever, every every week maybe. I don't know. They come out a lot. <laughs> so that'll take me a while, but um yeah, just a little bit. Um I'm, I'm started at least, you know, yeah. it's something. Julian Lido will be happy and about I that. Also, it's really I mean, it's fun. Like it's crazy yeah. and insane. But it's fun. And I think there's a reason that it's like the most popular thing on the planet. Like it, it's it's entertaining for sure. And I just read volume five of I Am a Hero, oh, which is a about really good before, yeah. uh, like zombie apocalypse manga. It's so fascinating, right? It's like such an insight into Japanese culture. Like in this volume, there was a scene where like there's these two people in a car and they're, you know, they're like dying of thirst and they pull up and there's a vending machine. And of course we would just smash the vending machine and take all the water because we're dying of thirst. Yeah. And they go like rooting around in the car until they find a coin enough to get two bottles. And they put the coin in and take two bottles of water and get back in the car and drive away. It's like, it's the fucking end of the world. 
how, you're still putting money in a vending machine, but it's like, you know, in Japan, by and large, you obey the rules and you're polite about, you know, it's like society functions because you obey the rules. Yeah. And that's, that's what they're doing. Putting money in the vending machine. <laughs> That's the thick volume, though. Is that is it a quick read? It's a double. It's a double volume. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's the it's the um, dark horse omnibus thing. So it's okay. actually like two in one. It's it's been a very good series. It's like it's quite different from uh, a lot of other zombie stuff because it's just like kind of chiller again because it's like a it's like real people and not like action heroes you know and um, i know some of the other books try to be real people but they sort of make them out to be heroes after a while yeah. and in this one it's like no the main guy is like a big dork and he's like <laughs> super nervous about everything again like he has a gun because he's a like a, he does skeet shooting and he's like but i have to be careful like i have to make sure i have my permit and it's like there, there are no cops like the, <laughs> just, the, nothing no one's going to arrest you because you have your gun but he's like obsessed with like worrying about it and that's just a very different from american zombie comics you know yeah so it's fun <laughs> because of, it's fun because it's different i think it's really sure i wish dark horse had an app for manga like i have the the viz app for so that I can read One Piece and My Hero Academia and, and lots of other stuff, but um, not, you know, you gotta still buy Dark Horse stuff. Yeah, sure. There's probably an app, but not like not a subscription or whatever. And if I gotta pay for it, like then I'm just gonna buy the book. You know? Right, right. I don't want to buy one off digital comics. That no, no. I, I either really subscribe to the whole thing or no. <laughs> I still have to go back and and read. I've never read all of All Star Squadron or Young All Stars. Um, five years later, Legion. I have all that stuff. Ooh. Five years later, that that's that's my sweet spot. I I got that because of you when we were out in Pittsburgh one time. We went to Ides and they had the whole thing in one clump, and I'm like, that's easy. Yeah. And that's been how many years, and I just haven't broke it open yet. God, that's like watching that's like watching your favorite ensemble well written you know HBO show I'm so ahead of its time so ahead of its time so good and it's all about the legion of superheroes which is totally frustrating for anybody who's not like you have to you have to really know your characters your main characters because they don't call each other cosmic boy phantom girl they use their real names and their names okay. are all tripped out because it's the future. Yeah. They're not in costume. And um, it's a slow build. You know, you're only introduced to a few characters at a time in the first couple of issues before you get like the big, mm -hmm. before they all, but man, um, and it's all nine panel grids. So if you're not a fan of that. Oh, I always was. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it too. But boy, what a. Whew. I love, that's one of those that I wish I could go like there, there are a bunch of different titles that I would, I just wish I could go back and read for the first time. Oh, sure. Again, you know, sure. and that one was definitely one of those. Cause I jumped in at like, um, issues 17, 18 and 19 or 18, 19 and 20. Cause I was out of comics in the 90, uh, late 89, 90. And the thing that got me back was um was uh a lonely place of dying um yep. i remember getting or hearing about titan's hunt um i think that's when i picked up arkham asylum uh there were just all these things happening and i was like yeah what is going on so i was like well let's what's going on with the legion and i was like flipped, picked up these issues the covers don't even have the lead speaking of covers they don't even have the legion on them the one is like the moon crashing down to earth. Another one is like the dark circle villains. Um, and I was reading it. And I was like, wait, what is go? They're older. There's a war. The Legion, there is, the Legion isn't even the Le Legion. There's no team. Like who, <laughs> what's who's dead? What's going on? And I was like, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> and, and just went in and then got the back issues and, and I was I was hooked, man. So good. I'd I'd like to go back and read 
the my favorite, the Giffen Dimitteis Justice League for the first time again, and Starman. If I could start that and watch that story build right from the start with yeah. zero issue zero and going all the way through for the first time. That's a good that's a really good question. I don't even think I'd have to reset my brain on Guru because I forget like most of everything <laughs> I read, you know. And, and basically every issue of Guru is the same, so it's, it's fine. <laughs> um uh but like I feel like even though it's only four issues, Marvels, that would be great yeah, to read again. Yeah. God. You know? Marvels, Kingdom Come. They'd be they'd yeah, be awesome to try um, again. Well Marvels I was think the I'd first like to, for me was because, the first. because it was like you were looking at Human Torch, the Android Human Torch, and yeah. he was burning. Like it was the first time I had seen Alex. I think that I'd seen yeah. Alex Ross artwork, and I was like, "And I remember for me, it's the shot of the Sentinels flying over New York, and the and you get this upward shot." And I was like, "That's the first time they really felt scary." Yeah, yeah, that that's a great one. Yeah, I can remember. Speaking of that and old times, I remember we as the, as that original group that hung out from Golden Eagle went to Applebee's in Why Missing for Dinner one time. And somehow we were talking about Marvels with the, was it the cover where Giant Man's walking over? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And somebody said it over here. And I was kind of in the middle and somebody said it over here and just trying to, to get the conversation together. It, that was a that was a really fun night just yeah. talking about Marvels and, and just the, the grandeur of it all. Fables would be a, oh, a good yeah. one because it's such an epic series. But I also th- think... Cerebus, man. If I could dive back into high society for the first time again, oh, I have to. I have to try. I have that over there. I have to try that again. I've never gotten through that. Well, you, you remember we talked to the very first episode. I think it was the first episode where we like are yeah. one of our main goals. Well, I've been reading Cerebus from the beginning. Don't ask <laughs> me how. Don't ask me how I've got you know reading him. Um, because I have, I think I have. 80 issues of that 300 run all spread out, you know, and I, ha- I don't have any of the early ones. So I was like, Oh yeah, Brian. Yeah. And you know me, I got to read from the beginning, but I wanted to go from the beginning. Right. And the old you know, Conan stuff. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. And most people's, you know, they say it's, it's, you know, the parody stuff. I will say this though. So I'm up to issue 15 and all the time that we've been doing this new era of CGS, yeah, I've yeah. only gotten up to 15 issues. <laughs> there are some really good issues in there that are not just parody. Like it's not it's true. Uh, like the red zone, there's some, but like yep. the stuff with the, that's like pretty deep. It's all and, parody on the surface, right? right. But it's, but it, it's pretty real. And it's funny. And it's like, you meet the cockroach for the first time. Like, uh, you meet Lord Julius for the first time. That one, when mm-hmm. I when I read that issue, which was only around issue, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever it is, I was like, ooh, ooh, we are getting closer and closer to what I think people think of as Cerebus, right? So I don't, so I, I actually was really enjoying reading these early issues um, because you get to see the artwork develop and Garrett is not part of it yet. And mm-hmm. it's all Dave Sim and... Um, yeah, it's, it's, so when you, when you talked about that, I was like, yeah, that's one I want to do. So I have been reading it just very slowly. Wow. <laughs> cool. Cause I've never finished the series. Neither have I. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I think I read like one or two books ahead of where we stopped doing them as a group. Yeah. Right. I think I've read through maybe Rick's story, whichever issues are collected in that. Um, and all the rest of it, I've sort of been waiting because I, 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 you know, back in the 10 years ago, I thought, oh, we'll finish this together. Right. But then, of course, we never did. Yeah. And now it's like, well, are we going to continue? Because I'll, I'll just keep <laughs> waiting. I've waited this long. I'll wait a little while. You know, like, what the hell's the difference? You know? But we still have like 150 issues to read. I mean, it's like. I know. It's like half the series, roughly. I don't remember exactly which issues are like because we we did Melmoth together. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that was, that was the last, the last one, one we did together. Right. And so I don't remember which issues are Melmoth, but it's we. I don't we think had, we got up to a hundred. I don't think we're up to issue one hundred because because the first one is is it like twenty five issues in the first phone book and then oh so we might have been at because the the church and state one of those is like thirty issues right because they're, they're those are big 
we're probably close to a hundred or hunt, you know, or a little over a hundred. I don't know. Maybe Let's not. See. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The story was originally serialized in Cerebus one thirty nine and one fifty, so we stopped halfway. Yeah. Okay. We're at halfway. And then I read Rick's story. So that was like another, you know, eight issues or 10 issues or something. Right. So. Oh, well, then you got farther because it's Melmoth, mothers and daughters, guys, and Rick, and then Rick's story. Oh, wow. Then I did read. Yeah. I'll have to. Yeah, I don't Brian's remember. Almost done. We can start wherever you left <laughs> off. We can start up and I'll happily reread those. <laughs> the other one was um, not to go back to Vertigo, but Hellblazer. 300 issues of Hellblazer. Like, that's another. Yeah, I only read sporadic issues of that. I never read. Yeah, I read that yeah, very when, consistently. What's his face? The Steve uh, Dillon did the yeah, artwork. I was reading things. that yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, it's just so interesting. Like, when you have a finite thing that you can actually sit down and read, and like, that's the character or that's the team. Yeah. Not that it's like 12 issues and then another creative team. Like, that is it. Like, you can read. Like, yes, they're all different creative teams, but you want to read Con John Constantine Hellblazer. Yeah. There are 300 issues that you can read. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's pretty fantastic, you know. I still think, like, if I had endless time, I would want to read Savage Dragon all the way up to date because it's been so long running. Right? Like that's yep. sort of been on my to read wish list forever. And I'll, <laughs> I'll probably realistically never do it, but you know, I like the idea of reading that. Give a call out. Somebody probably has 300 issues of Sar of Savage <laughs> or whatever issues of Savage Dragon that they're willing to get rid of. And they're like, yes, here, take them. All. <laughs> well, it, it, I can't, then I can't make, then I'd feel guilty if I didn't read it, you know, like, cause it would take me forever. Yeah. So. There's a lot of anniversaries too from '92 and '93. Like the the um, we we talked about the Vertigo 30th anniversary, but Milestone is also celebrating yeah. their 30th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Image starting in '92, all those titles. And I I always go back and I'm like, God, I would love to. There's one that I would love to go back and reread for the first time, probably for selfish reasons and with blinders. Like I don't want to know that it's bad, like or that I'll think of it as some of those not being as good as they were in the moment. Yeah. Even even Young Blood, even Profit, you know, even the <laughs> even the ones that you look back now and you're like, oh my god. But um, yeah, gosh, what, what was it? Spawn, Savage Dragon, Wildcats, Young Blood. Young Blood, Profit. Um, well, not Profit, Wet Works. If you're talking the oh, original wet seven, yeah, Wet Works. Wet Works and Cyber Force. And what, what was the, the, the Silver Hawk? Is that? Oh, Shadowhawk. Yeah, that That's Shadow the Hawk. Shadow Shadow Hawk. Hawk. Those were the original seven. Yeah. Yeah. And God, I, God, I remember searching out for those like crazy. Spent so much effing money at Golden Eagle yeah. on those books. <laughs> I, I did I did I did have an Amazon gift card and I did buy the first two volumes however many issues it's got to be like 16 or something of spawn to reread the original first like year and a half of spawn I haven't read it in years I don't have the issues anymore but I remember loving it and loving the art for for the time so I, sure. I, I kind of had a hankering for that there's some really great eras of comics I mean I'm you know, I'm post onslaught with Marvel, so I'm getting into like Thunderbolts and close to, well, I'm still in Heroes Reborn, but I'm close to the Heroes uh, Return stuff that's really great. And Marvel Knights is coming down, you know, in a couple of years if I ever get reading further. Now, so Heroes Reborn, I really enjoyed Iron Man and Fantastic Four. The you other talk? two, yeah, not so much. No. But those, no. but those two, especially FF, I really like that. I'm six issues in on all four of those titles, and boy, that that Avengers takes a shit quite early. Like it's just <laughs> yeah, it's no, art and story is just. No. I didn't <laughs> give really... that our cap a chance. I looked and at that first issue and like, nope. At least I'll say this: at least Cap is consistent because I it is all Liefeld and it's consistent in its Liefeldness. Take that as you will. Um, the story is just. Yeah, it's not the ones that are concerned. I actually the the first Iron Man one I actually really like the Wills Portasi artwork. I like. Yeah, Fantastic Four is just Jim Lee being Jim Lee. It's total Jim Lee. You can tell they probably thought this was going to become a movie because yeah. there's there's 
the way they reshape the universe to include things earlier, like Wyatt Wingfoot is there from the beginning and, you know, the, the silver surfer stuff is mixed in with Dr. Doom and mole man is in it. Yeah. Super, you know, like it's just, everything is just compacted. Yeah. It makes me feel like it was like, this could be a blueprint for a movie. Um, but the artwork is still Jim Lee. And it's like, yeah, yeah it's still cool to look at, you know, yeah. for at least these first six issues until he leaves. And um, yeah, it's, it's a struggle to get through. <laughs> <laughs> So. By the way, if you if you want to read um, One Piece or My Hero Academia or some, uh, lots of other stuff, the subscription for for Shonen Jump slash Viz is only two ninety nine a month. Wow, get like, out! It's one comic, right? Like not really? even one comic now. So it's and it, and it just went up. It was a dollar ninety nine. <gasps> My God! So it was like so cheap. It was like why not? You know? Wow, and, I didn't know that. So. If you have even anyone listening has even mild curiosity about some manga, you can pay for a month, read some stuff, see if you like it, and then it's wow. chunk change, right? You know. So. Do they have a yearly subscription price? I don't. I don't know if they do. I usually like to try pay play yearly. I do want to read my Hero Academia because everybody talks about that because of the superhero aspect to it, and. And I loved One Punch Man, so I'm like, I'm thinking I probably would like that one too. It's real. It's a very good. Uh, yeah. I, I love it. I mean, we we mostly watch the show. Um, yeah. I've read some of the like ancillary manga that's come out, like, but um, the show is really good. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's all this time and not enough time to read. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> but we should we should read for you know people like Darren. Like we we got to continue on and. and Read yeah. and enjoy the things that that I'm sure he would want us to read and enjoy. Somebody posted his post from previous years about why he loved comics. I, I snipped that and saved it. That was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Absolutely fantastic to read. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use that any chance I get. Yeah. I, I even have thought about printing it out and getting it laminated, using it for a bookmark. Mm. That's cool. That would be just cool. a neat neat thing to read over put the little symbols of each character yeah we talked about that could be yep. cool yeah yeah and if you like i said if anybody wants to send in a tribute you know we don't record often but we'll you know when we do we'll yeah i would like to hear yeah absolutely from people that's hell that's that's some of the fun we had tonight was going back and telling stories about days gone by yep connect with your friends people this is yeah <laughs> yeah Talk next time. Oh, yeah. So you want to read yeah. the you want to read the um, Gotham by Gaslight. Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, yeah. I think next that'd be time. fun. And and send me whatever the new DC books have come out, and I'll try to catch up on them. Okay. I, I think I'm going to checklists. <laughs> I'm going to start you with the uh, world's finest. That Mark oh, Wade demo. I have to catch up on that. The first couple issues were so good. I might actually get my ass into the movie theater to see Ant Man. I know it's, I, I, I've heard the reviews, but I'm I'm like I, I kind of want to see it. It's entertaining, and, and I enjoyed it. It's kind of me. I mean, it's it's hard. What thirties ish Marvel movies out? It's hard to be spectacular every time. Um, I saw it with Ben. Matt's coming home on spring break in a week and a half, and he wants to go see it, so I'll go see it again. Cool. Well, it's either I go see Ant Man or I'm going to go see Cocaine Bear. <laughs> go see Ant Man. <laughs> Oh, come on. Cocaine Bear looks amazing. I will watch that sometime when it's on some streaming service. <laughs> I'm not paying for that. No. <laughs> looks amazing. I will pay you for Ant-Man. I'm not paying for Cocaine. I'll pay for Ant-Man twice. I'm not paying for Cocaine Bear. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Be Thank well. You. Be well. You too. Be healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Let's bring in Darren. Darren is here. Look at that soft gaze in the back of purple haze. You know, I, I've got the Ooh. RuPaul uh, season one filter. Oh, for, is that uh, what that is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, nice. Everything's kind <laughs> of fuzzy. You don't know where I am exactly. I need that. The, the lighting yeah. in here is very bad. Yeah, you look more like Liza Minnelli every time I see you. Peter. Oh, thanks. What's going on? Thanks. You know? <laughs> <laughs>